so far we have treated every document in the corpus as equally important right so in, in if you're looking at a web corpus for example um a blog article written on um you know a subject like uh, i don't know uh, mechanics say classical mechanics okay maybe an eighth grade student writes something on classical mechanics and then there's a university website where the physics department of that university has uh, you know a set of articles on classical mechanics from the standpoint of a query called classical mechanics both of those documents or all of those documents are equally relevant because they deal with the topic of classical mechanics but in addition to relevance in addition to being relevant what we need is we want the documents to be authoritative also okay so the uh, the web pages in uh, the, the web pages created by the physics department of a university have more authority than the web pages Uh, than the blog articles of you know a random student in a random school so we have seen ways to quantify relevance okay relevance uh, we've seen a, a proxy for quantifying relevance which was the cosine score which indicates how relevant a document is but uh, how do you model the authority of a document now the authority of a document is query independent okay it's something that's pre decided okay by, so it's a it's a static quality of a document think of the authority as also being quantified as a score and this score is a static score and it's query independent okay it depends only on the document itself for example wikipedia articles generally ha are considered to have more authority than you know articles from you know written by random people okay or, or on random websites so for many of the queries that you enter on google for example you'll find that um the wikipedia article appears pretty close to the top and that's because the wikipedia article has more authority than it's it's a more reliable website it has more reliable articles than you know a random website in a similar way the articles in certain popular newspapers new york times wall street journal and so on they would have more authority than lesser known newspapers online papers that have more citations will have a greater authority than papers that have lesser number of citations and then you know uh, another way to quantify authority is to look at how many users like that article or how many users have uh, you know uh, digged that article on dig or you know buzzed it on yahoo buzz or generated links to it using tiny urls or you know bitlies and so on or mark them you know or or give given them a thumbs up on delicious i mean these are all websites where uh, you know you can create an account and you can um, uh, mark certain documents as you know something that you like and uh, the more number of hits a document gets in terms of digs or buzzes and or or likes and so on or you know number of uh, tiny urls pointing to it the greater the authority of that document and then finally uh, there's something called a page rank which is which is kind of a number that is used to indicate the authority of uh, a document we're going to look at page rank separately uh, in a later lecture because that's actually uh the core algorithm that you know made google uh what it is today um at least uh, you know in the initial phases of uh, google page rank was the famous paper written by sergey brin and uh larry page so 
these are all ways to assign static quality scores to a document indicating the authority and what we're going to assume is that the authority of a document is going to be quantified as a score in the interval 0 comma 1 it's a static score it's a query independent quality score and we're going to denote it by uh, we're going to denote the authority of a document by g of d where g stands for goodness you know how good the document is so for example the number of citations for a document will be transformed into some score between 0 and 1. Okay, the closer it is to 1, the more authoritative it is. Now, as I said, we want to not just have relevant documents, we also want the documents that are returned at the top to have authority. Okay, so relevance and authority are both needed. So let's come up with this scoring scheme. Let's come up with a score which actually combines both the scores. Okay, so let's remember that the cosine score was between 0 and 1. And now we are saying that the authority of a document is also between 0 and 1. So we can come up with a score by just adding them. Okay, or we could have used some other linear combination. We could have said, I'm going to take the cosine score, multiply it with 0.7. I'm going to take the goodness score and multiply it by 0.3. Okay, so I'm going to give 70% weight to this, 30% weight to this, or I could give 90% weight to this, 10% weight to this. I mean, you can use some any linear combination. And in general, you can come up with other kinds of functions, you know, non-linear functions maybe, which can combine these two scores into a single score that measures or, or that is closest to the user happiness by some, you know, uh, at least on some test data. Okay, so this is something we'll look at later when we come to the machine learning section, if we get the time. But we could look at this score now and seek the top k documents by this net score instead of just focusing on the cosine score. Okay, now this is not really an optimization. This is more like a uh, an added feature of the search engine, where you know you are keeping track not just of the relevance but also authority. So this, so as I said, this is not exactly a, a heuristic that's being used to cut down the size of the set J into a smaller value what we're going to look at now is how to you know do that kind of an optimization or, or to, to, to do that kind of a speed up with this authority score now from the beginning of this course up to this point we have assumed that our postings lists are sorted in increasing order of doc ID we are going to do slightly we, we, we are going to do something different now with this authority score in place, we can now think of ordering documents not by their doc IDs, but by their decreasing order of the authority score. Okay, so we can we can order all postings by decreasing order of authority score or the goodness score. Now Provided that this score, the goodness of a document, is a unique value. Okay, if it's a unique value, characterizing every document, we can still do the posting uh, merges in linear time. Okay, all that we want to do the postings in linear time is for every document to be assigned a unique ID. Okay, and so far it was the doc ID. Now we can characterize every document by its authority. And assuming that every document in the corpus is assigned a unique authority score, this would still do the job equally well. Right? In fact, I mean, even if the authority score for some documents is the same, you can imagine secondarily then looking at the doc IDs. Okay, so you can say that what I'm going to order the postings list by is primarily the goodness score 
and then secondarily by the doc id so if two documents have the same goodness score then they would be ordered by their doc id otherwise they would be ordered in decreasing order of their goodness score now if you do that what is the advantage now your postings lists have the most authoritative documents at the very beginning so you when answering a query you're going to be parsing those documents the, the authoritative documents first right and what is the advantage of doing that if you have to terminate that computation midway okay then at least you are assured that the documents you gathered so far are the ones that are most authoritative anyway before we come to that uh, notice uh, or, or verify to yourself convince yourself that the postings intersection can still go on as before and convince yourself that the cosine score computation can still go on as before okay the only difference is instead of uh, ordering with respect to doc ids we are ordering with respect to the goodness score okay but the pseudo code is going to look very very similar the only difference is doc ids will be replaced by the goodness score everything else remains the same and again this can be combined with uh, the heuristics that we discussed prior to this slide okay you can still think about um, champion lists you can still think about focusing your attention on terms which have a high idf score you can still think of uh, you know imposing a constraint that a document should be present a document should have at least two of the query terms for us to consider you can combine and mix and match them any way you like okay so as i said the advantage of ordering postings in decreasing order of authority is that the top scoring documents will probably appear early in the postings traversal okay now notice that the top scoring documents are not just the documents which have the highest cosine score but they are documents which have the highest cosine score plus the authority score okay the 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 sum or the linear combination of the two so in applications that are time bound okay let's say your uh, search system is such that in order to satisfy the user you cannot take more than 50 seconds to traverse the postings list then as soon as those 50 if if you have this kind of a real time constraint then it 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 makes sense to have this kind of an ordering because if you have to return whatever results you've obtained in 50 milliseconds then at least your results will be the best results at least they will be the top results since you looked at the most authoritative documents first does somebody have a question sir. yes sir Uh, sir do we have any tool to check out the intermediate processing of whatever you have explained in the past two chapters so that uh, when we give the inputs we can trace the step by step uh, procedures um any are you asking for an example or yes a example in then the form of a tool so that uh, either as a ui or otherwise a separate program so that not writing our own pseudo codes just to get a clear idea about the flow of this oh, okay so some examples input values our own query and uh, generating a corpus like any uh, tools are available to check the intermediate results um what i would suggest is uh, maybe you can wait till we discuss as i said the uh, you know in this chapter we are going to combine the different components together so yes. i think the first the first time when you encounter these techniques they may seem a little disconnected but when you go back to them and because you know if you notice in this course what we've been doing is we've been uh, building up on top of what we were discussing earlier we've been reusing many of the ideas uh, that yes, we used had earlier many times so i think you will get used to it uh, pretty soon okay 
Thank but you, I will, I will, I will let you know in case I, uh, you know, if I have some kind of an educational tool where you can play around with this. I don't think there is any such tool, but if there is, then uh, I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, as I said, you can combine this uh, authority scoring or this combined authority come cosine uh, similarity scoring with champion lists or the other techniques that we've discussed. And uh, for example, uh, the champion list could contain the top R documents, the top R documents with the highest authority score plus TFIDF score. Okay, earlier when I talked about champion lists, a champion list contained the top R documents only with respect to the TFIDF score. But now, you know, you can think of combining the champion list with this particular technique, in which case you can store the combined score. Yeah, can I switch? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt regarding champion list. Okay. Go okay, ahead. as you said, uh, champion list, we have a champion list for each term, each query term. Mm -hmm. which will show that all these documents which contain these terms. Okay, but sir, what happens if my uh, documents, if some of the documents get updated after some times, like in Wikipedia and all, we have editing, or documents mm -hmm. and some more lines are inserted. So earlier that document didn't contain a, like a term T2, but now it is containing the term T2. So mm -hmm. now we should uh, be having a dynamic champion list so what we are discussing, is it a static or dynamic? Well, think of it as static. Uh, yeah, think of it as static. And if you remember from the indexing uh, uh, lectures that we talked about, usually there is an auxiliary index and then there is this big index. Okay, So it's not that in the big index these updates are happening. These updates will only happen in a much smaller auxiliary index. And at some point, the auxiliary index and the main index will be merged. And uh, then, you know, a new index would be built afresh. And in the process of merging, these scores will be recalculated. Okay, so there may be some time lag between uh, updates. Yeah, it will be better uh, if there is a updation after some time. Okay, sir. Yeah. Since the auxiliary list is smaller, you can, you know, you can probably do more things on it dynamically. But um, frankly, I mean, you know, how exactly actual search engines do it, a lot of these details are uh, um, not publicly available. So it may be difficult for me to exactly say what Google does here or what, you know, Bing does and so on. So, um, having champion lists, you can turn off the microphone. Having champion lists combined with this score can again, you know, yield some kind of a speed up. Okay, so, and then we'll take the top K results from the documents that are in some of the, champ in at least one champion list of uh, some query term, okay, like before. 